speaker, first I rise to support the report of this committee. The question, Mr. Speaker, that we ask ourselves, did we see the vetting committee doing their job? Did they spend time look, uh, looking and examining the suitability of these nominees? The answer is yes. I don't think in my own sense that the time you spend on Sunday when you are supposed to go to judge was in vain. But it was a time to scrutinize people who will serve Kenya regardless of where they come from and their color and their religion. That is what you did on Sunday. Mr. Speaker, when nominees are vetted and brought to this house to be approved or disapproved, Mr. Speaker, once they get favor of this house and be appointed, Mr. Speaker, regardless of where they come from, they will serve all Kenyans, Mr. Speaker, regardless of their communities. I expected the CS for Treasury, one honorable party, to serve the people of Kenya, including Baringo, where we did not have any, any minister, Mr. Speaker. We expect the minister, Joe, to serve all Kenyans, Mr. Speaker. So ministers that shall get the favor of this House, Mr. Speaker, shall diligently serve the, the president, the appointing authority, and the people of Kenya, Mr. Speaker. That is, very, that is underlined, Mr. Speaker. They are not supposed to, to serve their party leaders, but serve the presidency and the appointing authority and the people of Kenya. That is supposed to be underlined, Mr. Speaker. Number two, Mr. Speaker, is that ministers that showed performance were rewarded. I come from a county that has been rampaged by banditry, and one Professor Kindiki is a professor of law, but he has excelled in security, Mr. Speaker. Today, the people of Baringo are able to sleep because of how much time Professor Kindiki spent in the bush. In fact, most of the time, you find Kindiki across Kenya. Mr. Speaker, I also call upon the minister, if they are in favor, Mr. Speaker, of this house, that they need to understand their technocrats who work in the ministries, not to overrun them not to assume the members of parliament whom we spend a lot of time approving them here and later on to try to disobey what we present to them, Mr. Speaker. We are the people's representative. We represent the interest of the people. Any member of parliament that will go to any office of the cabinet secretary, it is no longer business as usual as you, as you used to do. It is now business to serve the people of Kenya in a manner that will please Kenya and bring prosperity to this nation. This nation was living, Mr. Speaker, but an opportunity has come to correct all the wrong things, including ambulance, so that Kenyans will get people who serve them. Mr. Speaker, finally, Mr. Speaker, the government is big. The single Give him one minute. Mr. Speaker, one minute. government is big. I ask the appointing authority. Find favor, because this lady did not, during the vetting, did not communicate properly, and suitability was not correct. But the appointing authority find favor to place this lady in any place in government, Mr. Speaker, so that the people where they come from, where they have seen hope, will have hope and continue. And, and finally, ask the appointing authority, find favor and appoint someone from Baringo, a lady, so that this country can move forward. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, Kenya is a representative democracy where the current constitution vests or confers power to each of the three arms of government. Mr. Speaker, the reason why under the current constitution, pursuant to Article 152, the president nominates, parliament vets and approves through the participation of the public. Mr. Speaker, what the committee has done is to put into context the constitutional role of each of the three arms of government. Mr. Speaker, having said this, we need to reflect on what has happened to the, just the cabinet that has been dissolved. Mr. Speaker, some of the things that I have noted, and I know you have been around and I have been around, some of the things that I have noted is when you are appointed to a public office, civility is not a sign of cowardice. One of the things that was missing in the just dissolved government was that civility, humility, and humbleness. 